Okay, so I'm back again with another Helix video. Um, I had uh, some more questions uh, with some people asking about the use of compressors. I touched on it a little bit in some of the previous videos um, and talked a lot about how I would approach my use of compression in my general everyday patches if I was just making just kind of an all-purpose overdrive patch or clean patch. And my idea was to always kind of just keep the compressor right at the end after everything, reverbs, delays. And, and my, my reasoning behind that was to kind of um, use it more as a mastering engineer would, where it's just kind of to glue the whole sound together, uh, delays, reverbs, effects, and everything, and just kind of make it a more cohesive unit. A lot of people questioned me on and said, oh, I wouldn't put a compressor after the effects and delay and reverb. But th that was done very specifically and I wasn't using it, as I mentioned in a previous video, as a real dramatic compression, more as like I just said, a glue. This video, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk pretty much strictly about the more classic way guitar players use compressors, which would be used at the beginning of the amp uh, chain or the, the the signal chain, I should say. Um, usually put before all effects, you know, before overdrives, uh, before chorus, and usually, you know, maybe the only thing I would put before that would the, the compressor would be a volume or a wah pedal. Uh, but for this example, I'm just gonna stick with a very simple chain just to kind of dive into what a compressor does. So this is a thing I've come across a lot over the years through the studio work I've done, whether I've been engineering projects for, for others or mixing, people don't seem to really understand uh, what a compressor does or what, or, or, or sh maybe I should say what the controls on the compressors do, uh, do exactly. And I find that a lot of times the guitar oriented compressor pedals that are on the market are usually very simple. Uh, one knob or two knobs, you know, sometimes output sensitivity, which are not really compressor uh, terms for somebody who's used to working with studio compressors. There's a lot more parameters involved in the compressor, but it's almost like sometimes these pedal makers are kind of uh, watering it down a little bit for the guitar player who may not know what those are and says, let's just give them something that they can dial in a quick compression patch. My personal experience is I've hated most of those because I am looking for those other parameters that I want to be able to dial in uh, to tweak my compression a little bit more. So today I'm going to dive into all of those different variables that we can uh, find in a studio compressor and that's going to help us to understand if we have to use a studio compressor but also if we have to use one of the more simple compressors and maybe read a little bit about what each of those controls that they have put on there do and, and maybe decide that that compressor isn't even for us. Maybe we do want more control over our sound. So we're going to dive in first. Let me give you an analogy on what a compressor does. A compressor in the very simple description is basically an automatic volume control. That's, that is a very major oversimplification because there's so many other parameters that it has available for us to tweak and shape the sound I'll give you an example. Uh, imagine if we were uh, a guitar player about to record in a recording studio with an engineer uh, or uh, play with a front of house sound man. And we told our front of house guy or engineer that we need them every time you hit a note on the guitar to turn the volume down just a little bit. But here's the kicker. Um, I want to play the note and I want the note to be just normal for five milliseconds. But then I want you to, to lower the gain on that by four dB or the volume on that by four decibels for 50 more milliseconds and then raise it back up to normal kind of slowly. It's, it sounds like the most ridiculous thing and wouldn't even be a possible thing, but that's exactly what a compressor is doing. And if we understand what the controls do, then we can really dial in uh, or shall I say shape our sound in very specific ways. So let's dive in to the Helix uh, compressors that they've given us. And I'm on version 2.3. So if you can see here on the screen, we have the Deluxe Comp, the Red Squeeze, which I believe is the MXR Dynacomp, the Kinky Comp, which is the um, exotic compressor, I believe, and the LA Studio Comp, which is the Teletronics LA2A, which is an old studio Opti optical compressor, opto compressor. Uh, I'm not going to get into the three band comp. I believe I've never even looked at it on here to be honest with you, but I believe it's a multi band compression, which is a whole other ball of wax because that's going to allow us to compress different frequency bands 
uh, instead of just the whole frequency band at once. It can be a powerful tool, but it's a little more in depth than what we want to get into for this video. Maybe in a future video we can do it. But I personally, for guitar, I probably wouldn't even get into that uh, too often. I'm going to focus on the deluxe comp at first. And the reason being is because line six, and I believe this is just line six original, it's not trying to copy anything, has done a great job of putting sort of the classic parameters in here that we would find in most studio compressors. Right here from threshold, ratio, attack, release, mix, level, and knee. We're gonna talk about each one of these and how it applies to a compressor, what it does, and how it's going to shape our sound. And then we're going to go compare it to some of the other compressors, the more common, you know, guitar-oriented compressors that are included in here as well. And maybe even see if we can dial them all in to sound very close to one another. Okay, so let's dive in. So first things first, um, I may not go in order here, but I might jump around a bit to what makes the most sense. So I'm going to start talking about attack first. So what I just said to you is a compressor is basically an automatic volume control. We want it to lower our volume at a certain point when we strike the strings or strike a note or strike a chord. There's a lot more variables to this though than first meets the eye or that we can possibly think of. So what the attack means is when is that volume reduction going to start? Okay, so when I hit that string, is it gonna start immediately? Is it gonna start a short time after? Now you might say, well, what's the difference? Well, it's a huge difference because if I play a chord on the guitar, there's an obvious pick attack. We hear the pick hitting the strings, right? Um, that's a very short, what they call transient, right? Transient attack, transient spike, transient peak, whatever you wanna call it. And we can see that in a DAW on our waveform, it actually draws a much larger uh, line, which then dies off and tails, right? So you would see a, a chord with a big spike, and then it would just kind of taper down as the, as the volume trails off. Well, the attack is going to allow us to set when we want that volume reduction to come in. Now, what line six has done here is they've given us an attack that goes all the way down to 0.1 milliseconds just super, super fast for a compressor, but it could be very useful. If I have an attack of 0.1 milliseconds, it's gonna chop off a lot of that pick attack. So every time I hit a note, that pick attack is just gonna be squashed right down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe lose a lot of that pick attack and maybe the sound isn't gonna cut so much, but maybe it's also gonna sit better in the mix. Now, maybe 0.1 milliseconds is too extreme, uh, but that's going to be up to whatever situation we're in. And they've allowed us to go all the way up to 200 milliseconds, which in a lot of cases is going to be kind of useless uh, for guitar players because by the time we play a note, uh, you know, 200 milliseconds later, we're already into the body of the chord, right? And then it's going to start collapsing. And maybe that's what you need. Maybe you want that initial transient to come through. And then as it's decaying, you want the compressor to squash it faster or whatever. But anyways, I, that's not a setting you're going to see a lot for guitar or compression. So that the attack is basically telling us when precisely the volume reduction is going to begin. Okay. So we'll keep that in mind. The release is when that volume reduction that we've asked the compressor to do how long it's going to be hold, held for, sorry, before it starts to allow the volume to come back up. All right, so we can again say, well, I don't want it to come back up at all during that chord. So we might set that way up here at a whole, you know, one second maybe. So if I hit a chord, you'll get that initial squash of the transient or the pick attack. And then one second later, it'll start releasing that volume reduction. So it could get to the point where what we would have is squashed at the beginning because the attack was fast. And then as the decay of the note goes down, the volume on the compressor is going to open up. So it's going to keep that very even dynamically and even volume all the way through. So that's going to be a setting we can play with as well. So the attack is when the volume reduction is going to begin and the release is when it's going to start letting go and allowing the volume to come back up to its normal volume and just have, so the compressor is having no effect anymore. Right now, these changes I'm making are having no effect because of the threshold. Now, let's talk about the threshold. I have it set at zero dB. That means that the compressor is doing nothing right now. 
you know, and I, I've seen people put compressors on and play and they think, yeah, this is great. Compression is wonderful. Listen to what it's doing to my sound. You, it's not doing anything to your sound because your, your volume that you're playing at isn't even meeting the threshold that the compressor set at. So what the threshold is, is the compressor is only going to react and reduce the volume of what we're playing once our guitar hits a certain volume level. So if that threshold is set all the way up to the top, it's just never going to react. Even though I have the compressor turned on, it's doing nothing. I could turn this off and go. Turn it back on. You know, it's doing nothing or very little. I, if, if the, uh, if my playing is actually reaching the threshold that it's at. So we've got to lower that to a point where our playing is going to reach that threshold and surpass it. Then the other uh, parameters of the compressor are going to kick in and do what we're telling them to do. Okay, so right now we're really he not hearing much of anything, if anything at all. That's going to be a very important setting. The lower we set it, the more compression we're going to get. The earlier that compressor is going to come in, right? So the next parameter we want to look at is right here and it's called ratio. Um, right now you'll see I have it set at four to one and there's a bunch of different selections. There's two to one, three to one, four to one, six to one, 10 to one, 20 to one. That's a confusing parameter for a lot of folks. Um, so basically what that means is that once I, my playing or the signal that I'm sending into the compressor, in this case, the guitar playing, meets the threshold that I have set. So let's say I, I have my threshold back here at, at minus 24 and my signal surpasses that. What that means is that for every 4 dB that my signal surpasses the threshold, it's only going to raise the volume of what the listener is hearing by 1 dB. So as you could tell, 2 to 1, if I surpass the threshold by 2 dB, I'm going to get a 1 dB boost in volume. So it, it's basically cutting it down by half in the case of the 2 dB, right? Now, if I go to 3 to 1, now I've got to surpass the threshold by 3 dB for myself to only get a 1 dB raise in volume. So you can see on an extreme setting, which is more like a limiter setting, at 20 to 1, I've got to surpass that threshold by 20 decibels before I even get a 1 decibel raise in my volume. So that can be a very powerful tool. Uh, too much of it and we lose you know, maybe all of our dynamics, right? Because we, we have to really surpass uh, the threshold before we get any raise in volume whatsoever. So uh, a lot of times on, on, on uh, guitar compression, I'll use four to one, maybe six to one. Something like a mastering engineer is probably gonna use something much lower, uh, two to one. Some, some mastering compressors that are used even go as low as 1.5 to one or 1.1 to one just to give a very subtle um, squashing uh, of the dynamics uh, or of the volume. So that is uh, what ratio does. The level, uh, very simple, uh, it's just going to allow us to make up gain. Because what happens with a compressor is obviously it's turning the volume down. So if we compress enough, the overall volume of our signal goes down. So if we get, let's say, three or four dB of gain reduction, we would want to come into our level here and bump it back up by three or four dB. So that what happens is when the compressor is turned on, it's going to be the same volume as when it's turned off, but it's going to control the peaks more. So it's going to squash it, but we're going to get the same overall volume, if that makes sense. We'll leave that at zero right now. And I'll give you examples of all this after. The mix control is very interesting. Um, let's say we set a really aggressive compressor. We find it's just a little too much. Instead of playing with the other parameters, we can actually just roll this back. I'll just pretend we're, we're doing that at 50%. So what it's going to allow is the completely unaffected signal to come through 50% and 50% of the sound we're going to hear is going to be the compressed affected signal. Uh, a lot of engineers uh, in New York, they actually use a nickname for this called New York style compression. On drums, they would do this. They would set a compressor like an 1176 or something, very aggressive compressor, almost to the point where it was distorting the drum sound. And they would mix about 40, 50% of that in with the perfectly dry, straight, uncompressed drum kit. And it gave it this nice kind of almost grittiness to it. And it was a really common thing to do, still is, uh, for engineers to, to use on drum kits. 
but we can also apply it to guitar. Get a really compressed sound and then play with uh, just pulling it back and letting some of the unaffected direct signal come through as well. So that can be a powerful feature, but we're probably gonna deal mostly with the just 100% uh, compression for now. Maybe I'll dive into that a little bit later. Now the knee is probably one of the lesser important functions, especially in what we're doing here. The knee is basically, going to work after the attack. It's telling, the attack tells us, let's say I set the attack for, you know, five milliseconds. That means that the volume reduction the compressor is going to do is going to begin at five milliseconds, but how long is it going to take to get down to its set reduction? Well, right here at this zero knee setting, it's going to happen right away. As I bump this up, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. So it's not going to, it's not just going to go up and just chop off. It's going to go up and just gradually maybe bring the, uh, bring the volume down. I find even on this compressor in my playing around that it's not a dramatic effect. It could be for other things, maybe drums or, or other, you know, uh, a whole mix. Maybe if, if a mastering engineer was using a compressor, it would make a difference. But for now, I'm just going to leave that kind of at zero. Uh, okay, so let's dive into what we're what we're uh, dealing here with the deluxe comp. So those are the parameters. Um, so I obviously need to bring this threshold down to a point where we're actually hearing the sound be affected. So before I do that, though, I'm going to start with an attack of five milliseconds. That, that that's that's a pretty fast attack time, but we're going to hear that, and that's what we want right now is to hear the effect of these different things. I'm going to start with a ratio of four to one. Uh, let's just even go, go to six to one for now. So release, I'm going to leave at its, at its fastest setting for the deluxe comp, which is 50 milliseconds and the rest I'll leave alone. So um, here's a bit of just this with the threshold set at zero. So there's not going to be probably no effect here. Very clean sound, by the way. I'm using just the uh, deluxe Fender Deluxe model US double norm into a couple cabs. The, the stock cabs that come along with that, uh, with a 421 dynamic and a 121 ribbon, the split that we talked about before. Just very clean. I'm really not gonna use a lot of compression like this on distorted sounds, like we talked about in a previous video with like the SAG controls and the bias and bias X. We can really control dynamics with a distorted tone from the amp itself. Distorted tones tend to be more dis um, compressed naturally. Uh, we don't really need I, again, anybody can do whatever they want. My personal preference is I don't usually compress them in front. I do it at the end, like I was talking before at the kind of mastering section of it. So, okay, so I've got a nice clean sound. Now I'm gonna bring this threshold back so we can hear, again, here, here it is without. Okay, I'm gonna bring that back a fair ways, see what happens. Not tons yet. Let's go way down. Now we can hear it squashing. That's come down a lot. Now, if I just turn that on and off, you're gonna hear a very big difference in volume now. Here's the no compression. You can hear it squashing. So now I could come in and I could take the level and say, well, how? I wonder how many dB of gain reduction I'm getting. I'm gonna bump this up maybe five dB with the compressor on. Now I'll turn it off. We're very close to the same volume level. But you'll hear that my initial pick attack now is squashed. So with the compressor off, that pick attack comes through. With it on, now we're hearing what a compressor does. So let's play with the attack now a little bit. I'm gonna squash that even faster so it chops off even more of that attack. With playing with nothing else but the attack now, let's listen. No matter how hard I hit it now, it's just chopping that note right off. Now that might be faster than we want. 
and just more chopping of the note than we really want. Let's go up and say 10 milliseconds compared to what we had before, it was five milliseconds. Back to five. Chopping it a lot more. If, that, if I go way up to, let's say, 50 milliseconds. Now we're hearing is not the same kind of effect. If I turn that off. All I'm really getting is a gain boost from the level being up by 5 dB. But I've, I've lost my compression because it, it, it's not cutting that attack of my note off anymore, right? So 50 milliseconds. to 0.1 millisecond, huge difference, right? Huge, huge difference. So I hope that part of it kind of explains what a compressor is doing. Um, I would say kind of typical setting if you wanted to get a nice squash sound would be let's say a four to one ratio, five to 10 millisecond um, attack and probably maybe 50 millisecond 100 millisecond release somewhere in there. But again, it really depends on what you want, right? Um, if I was to play more chord stuff, which I, I strum a chord and just hold it. That release time works because I don't hear this swelling of, of the, the chord coming back up. Um, let's, let's go with a faster attack and try that again. I don't know if you can pick that up, but you kind of hear the note just come up a little bit. But because it's such a short release, we get rid of that initial attack and then it just kind of allows the natural um, decay of the chord. But if I move that release way up now, let's say even to something dramatic like a second or two. And now I hit it, let's hear what happens. We heard the initial squash of the compressor and then a very noticeable reintroduction of the chord for me in a, in a very unpleasant manner. I, I don't want that. So what that's doing is something that is referred to as pumping and breathing, where, where it almost sounds like the compressor is breathing, right? Because you're hearing the chord trying to come back in and the compressor is fighting the natural decay of the note. The note's decaying, but the compressor is trying to bring it up in volume, right? almost has like a slight volume swell. So that's why a setting like that might not be appropriate with a lot of compression. So like I said, if I go down to 50 milliseconds now and do the same thing, it's a lot more stable. Now that obviously is a very fast attack time. But again, if I go back to five milliseconds, I get that nice squash at the beginning, four to one compression ratio, not too dramatic. If I up that way up, we just get more of a gain reduction at the beginning, but the four to one works nicely. Um, so that works, you know, that, that, and again, if I, if I go way down on the threshold, now you're gonna hear a very big volume drop. And a really strange thing on the on the decay of the, the chord, not nice. So all of these settings are rather important. So you gotta play around with them. We want the threshold to just come in and maybe give us three, four, five dB of gain reduction, which is what we have it set to. And the way we can tell that, if I turn the volume or the, the, the compressor off, there's my volume, turn it on. It's roughly the same volume, right? Except we've got that squash at the beginning. I added 5 dB of what we call makeup gain. So that's telling me right there that because those are so close, and I'm just going by ear on this, that I'm probably reducing the gain by about 5 dB. If I come up with this and, and up it to, let's say there, um, compressor off. Now the, the compressing is a little bit louder, so I could come in here and say, okay, I'm probably only maybe dealing with three to four dB of gain reduction now. 
maybe even less. 2 dB? Sorry, let me try that again. Much closer now. See, so depending on where you set your threshold, that's gonna determine how much makeup gain you're needing or how many dB you're allowing the compressor to squash it. Okay, so that's a quick introduction. I hope that was clear. It's, it's kind of a tricky thing to, to explain, but I hope that was clear. Now, here's the problem. Okay, so I, I set up a couple other patches here, compressor test one and compressor test two. Now, compressor test one here was more me setting up uh, the four compressors that come uh, it, with the Line 6 Helix as of 2.3, right? We've got the Deluxe Comp, the Red Squeeze, which is the MXR Dynacomp, the uh, exotic uh, SP compressor, I believe it is, uh, which is in, in, in the Helix is the Kinky Comp, and then we have the LA 2A, which is the LA Studio Comp. So I set these to really extreme settings. Here's the problem, okay? I set up four snapshots again. I have Deluxe Comp, Dynacomp, Studio Comp, and Kinky Comp all on separate snapshot so I can easily switch between them so you can hear what's going on with them. The problem being, let's go to the Dynacomp snapshot now. Uh, is this the, where, which one is it here? Sorry. Da, 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 da. Of course, it's this one here, the red squeeze. Okay, so that's the one that's on. This has a control called sensitivity and it's got a control called mix and level. Okay, so now everybody goes, okay, well, what just happened to all those things we talked about over here on the, uh, where is it? The deluxe comp with threshold, ratio, attack, release, mix, level. Well, that's all gone. Like I said, I don't like a lot of these pedals because they, they kind of dumb it down in a sense. And they say, well, let's just give them the sensitivity and we'll combine the threshold and the ratio all in that control and we'll just kind of have it. Now, some people may really like that, but I find that a lot of times I can't find the proper setting I want to really give me the sound I'm looking for. You know, so I, I find those kind of tricky. So one thing you almost have to do with both with, with, with compressors like this is go and look at the manual of the actual product, right? To figure out, well, what is going on here so that I know now that I understand what a compressor does, I would like to know what this compressor is doing without just having to rely on my ears. I couldn't do that, but maybe just a little bit of knowledge is going to help me to figure things out a little bit easier here. So let's do that. Let's go over to the website here and I have both the Dynacomp um, manual out here and there's some pretty interesting information and if you look over at specifications it says uh, max compression 36 dB so that means the most it's going to reduce the signal is 36 decibels attack time 5 milliseconds release time 1 second so you're, oh okay well now we understand that in terms that we were talking about with the uh, the uh, more more in-depth compressor in the uh, the line six compressor but over here it says output knob controls overall effect volume sensitivity knob sets compression ratio okay well that's kind of interesting then so it sets the compression ratio the output knob so if we come back over here and I would tend to think then that that's going to be the mix knob. Let's see this again here. So we have output and sensitivity. We have level mix and sensitivity. I'm almost thinking that mix is going to be it on this one. I tough, tough call. Okay, anyways, let's let's put that aside for a second. The other one that I, I looked at was the manual for the exotic SP compressor. Now, this one's a little different because it says that we have um, dry effect blend control. So that's going to be like the mix control. Do we want all compression, all direct, or do we want it somewhere in between? Okay, fine. Then we have a volume control. Well, we're kind of, where are the compression settings? Well, Internally, this has dip switches, right? And if you notice, it has four dip switches. And here it says attack, release, long to high or long to short, low to high, long to short, depending on how you have these dip switches set. Kind of a confusing way to do things. So this doesn't give us a lot of information to work with as far as the, that would be the kinky comp goes. But what line six has done, and if I just come over here to the kinky comp, there we go. They have given us an attack, but not in milliseconds. 
in just 0.5 increments, right? Which whatever that means, right? But they have given a us a release time that so we can go slower or faster. They've given us a level and a mix as well and a sensitivity. So we have to kind of guess a little bit and use our ears to hear what these do. So what I've done with this is I've set up four snapshots and tried to get them, well, not, not so much try to get them to match here, just to hear the difference. I've matched the volumes as much as I could. Um, so first of all, the deluxe comp would sound like this. Now you hear that's very aggressive. I've set these really, really aggressive with settings that are, are almost ridiculous, but just more to hear what they're doing, okay? So if we go to the deluxe comp, I have my threshold way down to minus 50, my ratio way up at 20 to one, a fast attack time three milliseconds and a really slow release time to kind of let it breathe a lot. And there's a reason I did that. If you remember, the Dynacomp had a one second uh, set release, which I really don't like, but you'll hear it when we use it. The mix is 100%. The level makeup is up at plus 28. So that sounds like this. You'll hear that initial attack is gone and then it kind of fades up in a funny way. It's just not really pleasant, I, I think. That's to me, is a poorly set compressor. You can hear all that pumping and breathing. Okay, so let's switch over to the Dynacomp. Now the Dynacomp, I set with the sensitivity at 10, level up to 12, mix at 100, just to see maxed out settings. Now, if we remember, that had a fixed attack time, I believe on that one, of five milliseconds. So it's actually not able to really clamp down on the initial transient. If you notice when I hit it, the initial spike gets through and then it clamps down. Listen. And then it does that pumping and breathing thing coming back up, right? Because it has a one second release. That's not a compressor I would probably be too fond of using because of that one second release, unless you set it much more subtle than that. So it was just barely working. But again, I would just rather have control over those parameters. Okay, uh, let's go into the kinky comp now. And again, this was very uh, hard to understand those dip switches, right, on that was this is going to be long attack or sorry short attack fast attack and long release or you know depending on how these disc switches were were um were going to be used right so again we hear a very similar thing going on a little faster attack than on the Dynacomp. It's squashing that initial transient more. Okay, and now we'll go to the Studio Comp. Now, I didn't talk about this one too much, but the Studio Compressor is more of a fixed uh, attack time. I believe it's 10 milliseconds and the release time on it is about 60 milliseconds. And that's not adjustable. That's just kind of what it is. The peak reduction is going to tell us how much of the gain reduction is going to come in and sort of control our ratio and our threshold together. Emphasis is interesting because that's a, a side chain emphasis on it, I believe, if, if that's what line six is modeled here, um, which is kind of the way that the compressor is gonna act with high frequencies only. So honestly, when you move this around on the guitar, it's not as noticeable, it really isn't. Uh, it just, it just isn't, you know? So uh, I've put that up to 10. We have that mix for the parallel compression again, and then a level control, but uh, let's just take a listen to it. You're gonna hear how it's not gonna squash the initial transient as much as the others. And because the release is set at 60 milliseconds automatically, it doesn't get as much of that pumping and breathing. Just a little bit.
Anyways, can I hear how the country players use that stuff? Right? Okay, so I'm going to switch switch as I'm playing between those just to see the effect of maximum kind of, you know, major compression settings on all of them. So here I'll start with the deluxe comps. I'll go through the Dyna comp, the studio comp, and then the kinky comp as we go through. So. So there's a difference, obviously. Is it dramatic? Well, eh, not, uh, not overly so, but there is a difference between them. Now that's, that was just ridiculous dramatic setting on all of them. What I've done then is I've gone to compression test two, where what I've done is gone in and spent a little more time with each of them, dialing them in more to what I would likely use them at, right? So if you look at the deluxe comp setting, I have a minus 30 dB th uh, threshold, four to one ratio, attack time of three milliseconds, 100 millisecond release, mix of 100% and to get the gain back up to 6.6 .6 dB. On the Dynacomp, which is right here, sensitivity is way down to, to, to five. I've set the mix down at 65 and some makeup gain on that one. The studio compressor uh, is set to peak reduction of 7.8, gain of 5.5, the emphasis of 10 and 1 dB uh, boost in volume. And the kinky boost, I set the sensitivity way down at zero, attack at two, release at two. Now, I'm gonna play a little bit through all four of those again, just to hear kind of what those sound like uh, as we s just sort of switch between them, okay? <laughs> As in the previous videos, watch up here on the snapshots where I'm circling right now, you'll see which compressor it is, right? We have Deluxe, Dyna, Studio, and Kinky. So you'll see when I switch and not just have to rely on hearing them, okay? So again... Uh much closer now on all of them, right? And you kind of go, wow, I could almost get away with any of those. There's subtle differences and maybe somebody's gonna to gravitate towards one over the other, but when set right, and when you kind of understand what your controls do, you kind of realize that most compressors you can dial in to get something close to what you're gonna get with other ones, right? So. That's the kinky comp, right? Deluxe. Dynacomp. Studio comp. Let's go through them each with just a single chord hit. That was a deluxe, Dinah. A little more squash right off, or not, sorry, not as much squash right off the top, a little more of that transient comes through. Studio comp. And kinky comp. The kinky comp seems to squash it right away and then kind of release it. 
not really my favorite kind of pumps and breeze a little bit. We could change that with the release time. But see, I still can't get rid of that pumping and breathing. Maybe go on. That seemed to fix it more up to 10, right? Very squashed though. Nothing wrong with the deluxe comp that Line 6 puts in as their sort of original comp, right? If you wanted something that dramatic, it works great. And I really like it because it has all the variables that you can control, right? And I've purposely set them maybe more than I would even go uh, for myself, right? Maybe if I was using this myself, I would go down to 50 millisecond, maybe there, a little less over here. Save that and then I'll, I'll go between just no compressor. That's obviously jumping in volume because I have the makeup gain set higher. Let me just bump that down. I'll go between no compression and the deluxe comp. No compression. That might be more typical, but again, that's going to really depend upon uh, what settings uh, you need for whatever particular thing you're doing. I'm playing really funky stuff, maybe country type stuff, you know. Uh, they can also be put on just very subtly, right? Just to control some peaks, right? Every now and then coming in. So it's, it, once you understand what the controls do, like which we talked about in the first part of this video, it really opens up the doors to being able to dial these in a lot better. And I find a lot of people, once they understand what all these controls do and really get a feel for them, they stop going to things like the Dynacomp or the um, Kinky Comp and the, the exotic compressor because there isn't as much control. You know, some of the nicer ones out there uh, in hardware, Empress FX makes an amazing uh, compressor. I can't remember the exact name. It's a blue box and it has all the controls. It's a FET-based uh, thing, more like an 1176. Uh, and obviously the Robert Keeley one, he has like a deluxe compressor. Maybe that's what uh, Line 6 kind of went for on that. I don't know. But that's a really famous one. But he has a model with, I think, the four knobs, right, which have, uh, I haven't looked at it in a while, so I don't want to tell you what they are because I'd probably be wrong. But I think there's more like attack threshold uh, uh, ratio and whatnot that you can kind of dial those in a little bit more. And I kind of just tend to gravitate towards those. I played with the Empress one on an old board of mine for a long time, the Empress Effects. That's amazing. Probably the nicest pedal compressor I ever I ever played through, uh, just because of the tweakability of it. You know, it worked really well. So maybe I didn't explain that well. I don't know. I hope I did. Um, sorry for all the stabby kind of muted playing and probably awful playing. Uh, <laughs> um, if you have any questions about it, please just leave them in the comments. Send me a message. I'll try to get back to you about it. It's a, it's a tricky thing to explain and to understand. But uh, that first part of the video today where I was talking about those different controls, I, if I explain that right, it's it's uh, it'll give us a better understanding of how this can be used. And maybe you will lean a little bit more towards the deluxe comp. You know, uh, this is a really great compressor Line 6 has put in here that we can use. So. Thanks for all the support, guys. I hope that helped some people. I'm going to do another video at some point about similar idea to this, but utilizing EQ. I've had some questions about that, so we'll talk about that. This is another really long one, but this is probably one of the more in-depth uh, topics, uh, actually, um, that we could get into. And uh, thanks for the support. Please uh, like and share the video if you don't mind. Hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing a, a lot more um, uh, material like this. Leave any suggestions uh, for any ideas you guys have in the future, and I'll, I'll do my best to get to them. For now, thanks very much for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next time.